Hey guys, today's episode is going to be super useful. We're going to dive into a powerful AI platform that anybody interested in AI should know about or must know about. And that's Hugging Face. Hugging Face has more than 1.5 million open source AI models from all over the world. I'll even show you how you can leverage Hugging Face to build your very own AI image editing app based on the latest Google Gemini update. So what is Hugging Face? Hugging Face is an open source AI community that has become the global hub for open source large language models. Whether it's Meta, Google, DeepSeek, Alibaba, whenever companies want to release a new AI model, Hugging Face is where they publish them first. Hugging Face is free to try and you can do a lot of things without paying anything. But once you start using their GPUs and stuff, you will start having to pay for $9 a month, which is the plan that I'm subscribed to. The main sections of Hugging Face includes models, data sets, and spaces. Let's start with spaces, which I think is where majority of regular people, people that are not super technical, who are not AI researchers, will visit most often. When we open up the spaces page, what we're going to see is spaces of the week, which are the popular spaces that you might want to check out and toy around. Underneath it, you'll see the running apps, trending first, and there are hundreds of pages of these. On the top, you can also filter by what type of spaces it is. It could be image generated video generation, text generation, or language generation, speech synthesis, 3D modeling. There are all these goodies in spaces and they're all ready for you to use with just a few clicks. Let's go check out one of the popular spaces this week. I think I'm going to try this LBM relighting. This is a model where they relight the object based on the background that you selected. I'm going to drop an image of myself here and then selecting a background and then click relight. And in three seconds, you'll see this image has generated me in a different background and it will make it more realistic. Although this image is a little bit spooky, but let's try again. And now you can kind of see before and after. After. It blends the first image into the second image. It doesn't have to be a person. It could be a product or whatnot. Another one that's been getting a lot of hype this week is Sesame CSM. Basically, you can create two speakers and make them say stuff that you want them to say. I'm just going to tweak this. And now let's listen to it. You can have at least called James. I waited for two hours at that restaurant. I told you the meeting ran late and my phone died. What was I supposed to do? That's a call. Nah, centralized. Find a charger to borrow <laughs> someone's phone, use a landline. Literally anything other than leaving me sitting there alone. I know this isn't perfect, this product, but you could at least test it. With a few clicks, you can play around with the latest AI tools based on the latest research. Then there's the model hub. Here you'll find all types of models broken down by categories, computer vision, natural language processing, audio, and there's so many of them, 1.5 million plus models, and it's sorted by trending by default. Remember, these are all open source and free. That means you can even look into the code, you can use it on your own. Once you click into a model, you can jump into the spaces that use this particular model. You can deploy it, you can use this model. There's a community section where you can have discussions about this. It's super cool. Then we can go into data sets. So what is data sets? Data sets is the data that you can input into your model. You can filter by language, by the task that it does. You could click onto one of the data sets and look inside and see what kind of data there is and how to use it. You can even run SQL queries if you want through the data set. And obviously you can download this and use this data set. These data sets are perfect for when you want to fine tune your own model. Now for practice, why don't we just take a look at what's cool. For example, if you want to look at this, I thought this was really cool. I uploaded a picture of a girl and I want to make the girl eat french fries instead of just holding her hand out. And we can see that it did just that. This is based on the latest Gemini model. You could 
input your own Gemini API key, but for now they're letting you try it for free. This is a really cool app, cool space. You can duplicate this repo, add your own secret and click duplicate space. I've already done that. So now I can technically input anything, make her cry instead of smile. And it's absolutely adorable. Say you like this product a lot and you want to host it on your own site. How do you do something like that? The code is public and you can download it. Let's just say you want to customize this. All you have to do is click on files. This is the code you will want to download to make your own app. So what we're going to do is clone repo and they are going to give you the instructions over here. Just click copy and then we're going to open up cursor, hit clone repo and see this pop up over here and paste this assuming you've already set up your cursor. If you haven't already, you could watch one of my previous video on cursor to set it up. Select a folder that you want to open it. Now that you're in here, you can follow the instructions and make sure you have this installed. Toggle this panel, which you can also use command J to bring up. This is just a terminal and install this. I already have this. I'm going to use cursor agent and ask it to help me build this app so I can run it locally. Add the context, attach the app over here and then send it. Even if you don't know how to code, Cursor is going to go step by step and figure out what they need to do. So first creating a Python virtual environment, Python 3, I already have it, install the requirement. Basically you just let Cursor run its course and accept the changes. You need to get a Gemini API key to use with this app and to get this key, if you go back here, you can click get an API key. You can create an API key over here. You're just going to copy it and follow the instructions. It's telling you to run the, the app will launch in the local server. Copy and paste this, paste it. As Cursor mentioned, this app will be running on this local URL. Click on it and follow it. And now you can see that this is on my local server. Dropping an image here, you can click generate, but it's not going to work because you don't have an API key. So once the user paste an API key, you should see that it will now be processing and generating. Based on the prompt that we set, there you go, we have a girl eating a banana. And obviously now this part is required about inputting your own API key since it's your own server. What happens if you want Cursor to alter this and customize it to make it your own? I just told Cursor I like this, that I want Sailor Moon colors and cute fonts. This is my prompt over here. We'll see what Cursor comes up with. All you have to do is command enter to accept all the changes. Now run the command once it's done. Click to follow the link. You can see that <laughs> The background is different. You can also change the title of this or whatnot, but you, you get the idea. You can customize your own site and make your own app based on the code that people shared with you. Obviously, make sure you look and see what kind of license it, it has and whether you need to give any credits. But that's how you can download the code and tweak it in cursor so you can make your own AI. Now that's it for today. This is a quick tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below letting me know if you've used Hugging Face before, whether you have spaces, whether I could check out your spaces, and I would love to see what cool stuff you build with it. Be sure to hit this like, subscribe, and notify button. That will help this small channel out a lot, and see you in the next video.